So I mentioned to you at the weekend, we saw lots and lots of people taking to the streets. They want their freedom back. They want life to go back to normal. Joining me now to discuss this is Richard Tys, leader of Reform UK. We have infectious disease expert Dr. Barrett Pakani from Exeter University and our very own Tom Howard. Gentlemen, um, let me start with you, Tom. Um, what's your thoughts on the new health secretary's announcement today? Well, I think this didn't come as much as a surprise to anyone. Really, we've been looking to that 19th of July date for quite some time. There was one Conservative backbencher I spoke to earlier today who said that he didn't really believe the break clause was anything other than a ploy to try and get more people on board with the delay in the first place. So not having this two-week break clause and going for the full four-week delay, I think, was always to be expected. But there was also a greater degree of optimism in what this new Health Secretary was saying than perhaps we heard from Matt. Hancock over the last few weeks. Uh, he was very, very clear to the backbenchers that we need to learn to live with this virus. There'll never be a, a zero level of COVID, that when we unlock, there will be some cases to go up, and we need to accept that as a, as a society. There will be some hospitalizations. There will sadly be some deaths. But uh, we've sort of reached the point where that death is low enough, I think, to be broadly acceptable to society once we get uh, many, many more jabs in arms. In fact, the health secretary said that by the 19th of July, two-thirds of all adults will have been double dosed and we know how much more important that double dose is compared to a single dose for the Indian Delta variant. And Richard, um, I'm hearing rumours that you put um, a helicopter to get aerial views um, of the lockdown protests at the weekend. What prompted that? But I was so concerned, Michelle, that uh, the previous marches just hadn't been covered at all by some of the more traditional media outlets and I wanted to be able to prove the size and scale of this march, which I knew would be huge. I'd spoken to the organisers. So I thought to myself, well, if they won't put a helicopter up to prove this, then I will. So we organised it. Uh, we organised a live two-hour show as well around it. And video footage was watched by, has been viewed by over two million people. And it proved... We're showing it now, actually. This is what you're looking at. This exactly. is your footage. And, you know, this is, this is absolutely clear. The size of this march was huge. Um, let's describe it in terms of how many Wembley stadiums was it? I think it was at least one, possibly two. So that's somewhere between 80 and 150, 170,000 people. And it was really important that actually uh, we, you know, we could clearly show the strength of feeling. People that really have had enough. Uh, they want these remaining lockdown restrictions, which are really still impacting on everybody's lives. Uh, they want them freed up uh, as soon as possible. Uh, the new health secretary is talking about the 19th of July. Frankly, for everybody on that march, uh, we'd like the restrictions eased tomorrow because they are still impacting on people's lives. You've got hundreds of thousands of school children who are self-isolating at home, not being educated. You've got parents who can't go to sports days. You've got people who can't sing and dance at weddings. You can't sing in church. It's huge numbers of businesses still uh, either can't make any money um, they're still going bust, sadly. The travel industry, the tourism industry, on its knees. So, you know, really, enough is enough. And I do think this new health secretary has got a real opportunity uh, to, to say, look, actually, the data is good. And that's why people were there on that march on Saturday, Michelle. OK, and Doctor, may I bring you in now? You are an infectious disease expert. You're hearing Richard there describe, you know, so many people coming together and saying enough is enough. They want their freedom back. What would you say to that? There are reasons for these restrictions, and one of the reasons why we've had prolonged restrictions are because we made the wrong decisions to begin with. We should have controlled and contained it a lot sooner, a lot earlier, by earlier actions. So the prolonged restrictions is not a function of we enjoy having the restrictions. It is more a case of you acted late, and therefore you seeded the nation with lots of cases, and thereafter we've always been playing catch up. The other big issue is that nothing in infectious disease control management is ever irreversible. Sometimes you have to bring in restrictions. So when you have uncontrolled, unrelenting infections in other parts of the world with zero to minimal immunizations, variants will arise. And when variants arise, we don't know what they will look like, how they will be performing. Therefore, to say this is irreversible is a little bit silly. It's a little bit populist because there will come a time 
Mark my words, there will come a time when we will have to have uh, restrictions, be it locally or regionally, to contain and control the outbreaks that happen after July the 19th. So, Richard, you've heard the, um, the doctor saying this is all just a bit populist and that basically it's not the right time to lift these restrictions. What's your response to that? Look, when is the right time? We have to learn to live with this virus. Let's just put it in context. Yes, cases are going up, but it's going up amongst the young and amongst children. Uh, they don't suffer with it. You know, I've talked to lots of people, anecdotally, children might get sniffles or they might have a day's flu. Look, we can live with this. Every death is, of course, sad and a tragedy. But the reality is we're looking at deaths that are delinked from the cases and it's less than half the daily average flu deaths. You know, we can live with this. And yes, you never know what variants uh, are around the corner down the track, but we know that actually our great scientists will come up with tweaks to the vaccine in the same way that you tweak a flu vaccine. Every year as flu tweaks, you tweak the vaccine. That's what we've got to have, the, cor the courage, the confidence and the self-belief that's how we learn to live with it. That's how we unlock. And that, Michelle, is how we get this country going again, putting the foot back on the accelerator of growth, of new jobs, and, and, and getting people going again. And that's what I think people really want. And, Tom, um, we've uh, heard the, the case from Richard as to why um, people want their freedom back. We've heard the doctor saying it's not quite the right time. But, Doctor, I think you wanted to respond to what Richard just said then. Yes, look, it's very clear what I said, and you need to hear what I said. I didn't say you need to continue with restrictions beyond July the 19th. I said it is disingenuous of the Secretary of State for Health and Social Care to say these things are irreversible. That is what I said. I fully appreciate that we can reformulate vaccines and we can do all sorts of things to contain variants. However, all of those measures take time. All I have said is that periodically, every now and then, depending on the outbreak, depending on the situation, we may have to have local or regional restrictions. That's what I said. Do you want to come back on that, Richard? I think I mean, there are many other countries around the world. Take Sweden, for example. Take states uh, in America who haven't had uh, lockdowns or, or, you know, really strict uh, measures. Actually, you know, they've seen less mortality than we've seen, for example. Locking down is a political decision, a political judgment, whether it's regionally or whether it's nationally. And what I say, and I think many people on our side of the argument would say, we've got to have the courage to learn to live with this. And, you know, those who are at risk, uh, the elderly, the vulnerable, uh, you know, the, the, the percentage of people who are being vaccinated is huge. Uh, we've, we've got to learn to live with this. And if people feel they're at risk, and you want to reduce that risk, then get vaccinated. That's one of the ways. But otherwise, people have got to live with it. We've got to move forward as a society. And we've got to avoid this temptation to rush into locking down because there's a new variant that may be of concern or because the NHS might be overwhelmed. Maybe it would be better to say, if the NHS is worried about being overwhelmed, then reorganise the Nightingale hospitals, build some more capacity, you know, rehire some of the medics uh, that have recently been retired. We cannot keep running the risk of keep locking down, build up more capacity, find other ways to do with it, and have some proper leadership and confidence to drive this country forward. And Tom, we talk about things being irreversible. Um, do you think that Boris Johnson is going to try and achieve the 19th and literally stick with it, or do you think we'll see slippage? I think that the, there is now a, a huge lot of political pressure on the Prime Minister to achieve that date. We saw the large Conservative rebellion uh, at the time of the extension, and really I think that's only set to grow and grow if that date is not hit. We also heard on Saturday the new jab in each arm strategy for, uh, for the autumn and the winter, this booster programme whereby you have maybe a flu jab in one arm and a Covid jab in the other, and thereby let the vaccines do the heavy list lifting to keep this disease down rather than some clumsy and harmful restrictions. We now have the ability to produce vaccines in this country, to design them in this country, and also these new mRNA vaccines that have uh, popped up, particularly in the United States, seem to be incredibly effective. So we have all of these new tools that can replace the old and more blunt tools that, that were needed to suppress this virus and to save lives. And also squeezed onto the